meeting to order. Um, Cheryl, would you call the roll, please? Bill Livingston? Here. Tim Nam. Richard Dakawa? Here. Joseph Cowley? Here. Nina Petroselli? Here. Larry Lennon? Here. Justine Simaroli? Here. Lori Collins and the office. Okay. Um, minutes from the April 29th meeting, regular meeting, was as submitted. Um, take a motion regarding the minutes. Yes, sir. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. Any comments, corrections? Okay. All in favor of approving the uh, minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay, um, <clears throat> old business, site plan review for 131 Washington Avenue, on pet crematorium. Um, in our packets there was a letter with some additional information. Um, does anybody have any questions? Questions, concerns? According to the engineer's report, there still needs to be some information submitted to um, the borough. Um, uh, some information regarding potential lighting, um, potential landscaping plan, um, and um, final sealed plan should be provided um, prior to building a uh, building plan. Maybe it might be appropriate to just have the engineer go through the entire review letter. Okay. And perhaps the yes. applicant representative. Okay. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Brett. I'm one of the principals with uh, London Smith Solar Engineer. Uh, with me tonight, too, Sean Monroe in the first row. Uh, from time to time, you, you'll see him at the meetings as well. Okay. Um, uh, we did have uh, did receive the plans on Friday. Uh, we did complete our review. Um, the applicant has added the lights. Um, that was requested at the last meeting one of the building. Um, we just wanted to make sure um, Planning Commission had that as a condition um, that they were acceptable. They do appear to match uh, the ones that's in the area. But, um, so I think they, uh, when they get their building permit, just check that and make sure that it does match what you wanted. Um, the second item was the landscape plan. They do call it out now that they're going to have landscaping. Uh, again, as a condition of the building permit. There's two small areas. Uh, have them actually submit the building permit. What they're going to do in those two areas, and then the plans will be marked draft. And again, for the building permit, that condition would be just that the um, prior to issuing the building permit, you receive the actual stamp plan. Um, so, uh, other than those three items, um, uh, I do believe it's okay to uh, recommend for you. Okay. And we were very, very vague with the, the um, landscape, and it's just one of those things to be in the notes. Sir? If you want to um, identify yourself. I'm John Ritani. I'm the one that sent that uh, <coughs> letter to you guys today. Um, it appears to me that the conditional use was granted to a piece of property that never was secured as a commercial piece of property. It's a residence. So a dwelling cannot be converted to a commercial property by conditional use. It has to go through the regular application process with regards to parking, with regards to um, Storm or runoffs versus ADA compliance. I mean, to, to start moving forward with converting this into a crematory without first converting it into a commercial piece of property seems kind of hurt for the horse, doesn't it? Well, it's, it's in a mixed use. It doesn't matter, but, and I agree, but the, the building itself is listed as a residence, <laughs> even though, like, my office is two doors down. I bought it as a residence. 
I had to go through a big process to get my building converted to a commercial property where I could move my office into it. Let me, let me address that from a legal standpoint. And I, and I know your letter does uh, refer to the Allegheny County Assessment page website and designation right. of that as a residence. That's not a zoning designation. That's only a tax designation for county tax purposes. That property is within a commercially zoned zoning district. It is already zoned uh, to be allowed to have this use. Secondly, it has received conditional use approval in order to have that use uh, occur on this property. Now they are in actually at one step beyond the, uh, the conditional use approval that says you may do this activity to the next point where we're at now, which is the land development plan. That's the, the, the conditional use is a zoning ordinance concept. That tells you where and whether you're allowed to do something. Once you have that approval, and you have it based also on the zoning map that says you can do it there, and the conditional use approval, then the site plan, the land development approval, tells you how you put that puzzle together on the site, not the building, just the site. This process tonight is about approving the site plan for, to enable the site to accommodate the building and the business. Now, one step further, there are UCC, building code level things that happen post-approval. We, as a council, the planning commission and council, they approve the land development plan. When they go to get building permits, if it's necessary under uh, the building permit laws in order them, for them to do certain things such as ADA accommodation, entrance, ingress, egress, etc., that's the <laughs> Parking is handled at a site plan level. So, so if I might consider your point, I went through an entire process to convert my office into a commercial piece of property, and it's listed on the county website as a commercial piece of property. My taxes are 50% higher than 131 Washington Avenue because I was told, because it's a residence, it's not a commercial piece of property. That in itself has a certain inequality to it. How, how can we be assured, and what, I'm telling you that in the town, parking is a big issue. And so how can we be uh, assured that all of these issues that go around converting a home into an office and then into a crematory, I just think that we're engaged in the process, process right now. This is part, well, I can tell you this is part of the process. process. We're at probably step three or four steps. The zoning ordinance allows it. The conditional use approval allows them to do it on a specific property. This present uh, engagement, this commission is doing the site plan, exactly what you're talking about. Do they have the parking? Do they have the lighting, et cetera, et cetera, for the land to accommodate the business? Then, after that's approved, the applicant can then go and get his building permits and any necessary uh, conversions, things in the building itself that would be necessary for it to be commercial, they will have to do that as part of the permitting process. On the tax end of it, once that building, as a fact, is converted to a business enterprise, you, if you turn on this assessment page next year, you will see that R change to a C, and the taxing bodies will so, evaluate it accordingly. It's kind of out so of If I understand you correctly, then you're saying that we will have an opportunity to sit in this room again and discuss that. No, that I did not say that. The of that crematory. No. Uh, I'm sorry, the what of the crematory? You're saying that the next thing is they're going to come up with some drawings and then that's going to be assessed again? No, no, no sir. So you're saying this is going to I can, let me clarify. The council, the borough council, the planning commission, and the council, we approve conditional use zoning applications and we approve the land development, the site plan itself. Once that occurs, it becomes then administrative after that. They go over to the permitting office and deal with them. We have a third party provider that does our code uh, permitting for us um, under the state law, the UCC. You know, and they will then, those plans, if there's building plans, we're not engaged in the building itself, we're engaged in everything but the building here. Once that's all approved and they get their ticket punch, so to speak, for that, then they go over to the permit window. And that's where they get engaged in the building permit process. So no, it's not a public process okay. in terms of, now, any, anybody, when you get a building permit, you post a notice in your window. If somebody is an interested party and they wish to go look at that, dispute it, appeal it, there are means for folks to do that, but not here. But here, you are certainly welcome, and that's what we're engaged in tonight, the process of vetting the 
the site plan and to determine whether it conforms to the requirements of our land development ordinance. And for example, I assume it meets the parking requirements. Yes. Sorry, is that site plan available tonight? Yes, for us to look at? I assume it is. Yes. Yes, and it's been available, publicly available. Okay. The office has since it's been filed. It's, yeah, that's been updated. Supposedly oh, okay. to be an update. Now they do do it as part of the natural process. The comments are made, feedback's given to the applicant. You need to add this because it doesn't meet the ordinance. They add it and they file a revised plan and tweaks it, so to speak. And Mr. Brett has commented, I believe, on their initial plan, and I think they've done some revisions and will owe us some revisions for lighting the landscape. Okay, so. If I believe there were irregularities in this process, mm -hmm. my next step is to file an appeal to the zoning board under Article 14. Is that correct? No. Um, if you believe that the land development plan, now remember, the planning commission is a recommending body, and this goes to the council, the borough council. The borough council approves it with or without conditions, and one feels aggrieved by that, then their remedy is to file an appeal, a land use appeal, in the common police court in Allegheny County, not the zoning board. Yeah. Zoning boards deal with variances and things of that nature. They don't deal with appeals from well, council. Under the area of jurisdiction, it seems like it's my understanding the zoning board can render a decision based on a decision made by the again with some facts. Right? They don't have jurisdiction over this sort of matter. Really? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> well. So I'm not really sure where to go. I, I was hoping that by identifying this as a residence that was being converted to a commercial property without due diligence, I have to tell you that there were several irregularities that were done. One is there wasn't proper notice presented on the building, and that's an issue. I never had an opportunity to see that. My office is next door. I literally walk past that building every day. I can tell you there was never a posting on that building. I had no way of knowing. I mean, for this application, I'm going to interrupt. What's that? For this application, the conditional use application, that's correct. That I have no personal knowledge of. You've got to write that. Please me or write that. Ma'am. Okay. We will I look at I I will I assume and we do in the normal course and normally it would be and we will document it whether that <coughs> property was posted for right. conditional use here. If it was not, and you had no notice of it, and you didn't appear, maybe you have a remedy. You would have to see How do I do that? You would have to seek counsel on it. Okay. okay. And then also, now, the, the drawings that were submitted as part of the application. This um, application or the conditional use? The conditional use application. Okay. I don't know what, what other application we got. Well, the conditional use was already approved, uh, I guess, a couple months or so ago. Or February 11th. Uh, February. February. This is a new application. The, the conditional use, I'm sorry to be spouting on about zoning and MPC stuff, but okay. the state law kind of governs all. And I know some of it's confusing as far as what's citizen and work, what's here, what's resident, and all that. The conditional use was approved in February. That's a zoning ordinance approval. Then they get out another book, it's called the Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance. Then they file a new application. That's, see, the zoning conditional use says, yes, you can do it. The, this application is a land use development site plan application. This is how you have to put the puzzle together, so to speak, of the land in order to support the business that you wish to put on there. Okay. So this is a, a, a separate application. They were given permission by that approval to file this application, but this is a new application. So are you saying I do have a an opportunity to have an opinion on this, or is this a done deal? You have this tonight is the occasion to okay. um, talk about, make any comments on, not on whether they're allowed to have a crematorium, because they've got that approval. Right. And if you wish to appeal that or pursue legal rights on that, I, you can see counsel on that. With regard to the site plan, the land development application before us tonight, Certainly, this is actually the time for any comments that you have about that and, application. And this gentleman here is the engineer that's handling that? Mr. Brett is the, uh, uh, Len Smith is the uh, appointed one, uh, uh, engineer for the borough, and he's doing land development matters along with his colleague uh, Sean Wingrove. 
the processes, the applications go through administration, and they're referred to the engineers for review, and they're referred to the planning commission, and most of all, they rely on the engineers' reviews and the legal review to make their recommendations. Then it goes on to the borough council. So Is there why I can ask Mr. Brett some question? You may address questions of council, but to, okay. to the chair. On the drawing that was originally submitted with the application for conditional use, there was a pad shown. A pad would suggest it's a slab of concrete. Okay, the pad is shown as 18 feet on the drawing. However, if you take a scale to it, it's only 12 feet. So, my, my point is, is they're, they're misrepresenting the encroachment on the parking lot because the pad is smaller than the dimensioning on the pad. That leaves you with less than three parking spaces. Okay? The second thing with regards to the pad, is that to suggest that we're going to put an oven on a slab of concrete and the kids can walk by and watch them cook these dogs? I mean, is this what we're doing, or is there going to be a building there? If there's a building there, then I would, based on the code, they were supposed to tell you there was going to be a building there. And I believe that your conditional use approval would have been impacted by the fact that they're going to put a building on the back of this building to put this oven in, which is then encouraging an apartment. I, I, there's so many irregularities in this, in this application. I really think we need to reset this, and we need to bring the people that live in that community down here to have a say in how this is going. This thing is just off the rails right now, as far as I'm concerned. We can, and I, 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 based on your comment, now, the pad we may be looking at on paper may not be the existing pad, it may be the proposed pad. The, the engineers can speak. Yeah, certainly, pad. please, we can verify in the field whether things are accurate or not, and that can, that, that can be done. Uh, I don't think we're suggesting that somebody's going to be going um, <coughs> in the quarry uh, outside. Well, I know, but why wouldn't that have been presented on the application? That was a misrepresentation of that application. Maybe no, it was a It may be a misunderstanding of what the scope of the application is when you're dealing with the, please, if I might, when you're dealing with the generic question of whether one can do an activity, that crematorium on the site. All the nuts and bolts aren't necessary to that application. That level of detail is not necessary or required necessarily under that level of application. Then when they get their permission generically, for example, I could have a vacant. I'm sorry, sir. May I please finish the answer in order for folks to understand, sir? For example, if that was a vacant piece of property with no building on it whatsoever, one could come in and say, I'd like to permission to do a, um, a pet crematorium business on it. I'm going to start from scratch, and I have the land, and this is my concept. Man. You do not have to have the level of detail that you would have in, in what we have today with that plan. So it may be that they didn't need that level but of detail. But if I was going to build on that piece of property, like you suggest, if I didn't say I'm going to build it, I'm just going to put a slab of concrete on a piece of property and make a park on, and then I decide to commit a building on top of that slab, I would think that that's a material difference. The application process that is defined in the zoning ordinance says that it is expected of the applicant to give the details with regards to what will be constructed, what additional buildings will be on that property. If there's a, an outline detail of information that is expected to be provided to your commission before you can render a conditional use decision, which was omitted in that application, and I can make your decision, the decision of this panel was misguided to the extent that you made, you are putting this community in a bad light, or in a bad situation. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Go may I suggest sure. something? Our uh, solicitors give the, the legal opinion. I think, with all due respect, Tom, I think it's time that we go to the engineer. Here, we go into the engineer stuff now. Yes. And Tom did a good job in the legal part. Now he wants to be engineer too, Tom. You know you and I, we just can't. I haven't Tom. said I'm an engineer. I am not going to turn it over to Mr. Tom. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, one, one of our clarification, when the conditional use came through, Gateway Engineers was the borough engineer at that time. They completed the review of that. Um, I do have a copy of the plan in front of me, I believe. Um, it does indicate concrete pad, and that was the information that was submitted with the conditional use. Um, and the conditional use to get approved, as Tom said, there's a process for the conditional use. The plans that we are reviewing tonight is for land development um, uh, submittal. And we reviewed that. It does show a building. 
Um, they do comply uh, with the requirements of the uh, code according to the land development submittal. So they've met their requirements. We have three they to meet the requirements of the conditional use that they were granted. Conditional that, use that's, of that's the fruit of a poison tree. But but the conditional use, as Tom explained, was approved in February. And there's a process there. I'm sure Tom can explain what that is. But they went through it. They submitted. Uh, Gateway engineers completed a review. Uh, it went to planning commission. And it went to council. Council approved it. And there's an appeal period after that, I'm sure. Um, and after that, the applicant followed the rules, submitted for land development. We subsequently reviewed the land development, and that's what's right tonight. Um, your complaints with the conditional use, I'm pretty, I know count, or the Planning Commission has heard that, but you'll have to seek counsel on what's your process for appeal for that conditional use because it's not what's before the board tonight. Tonight is a land development. They have submitted, and as you indicated, they have an engineer drawing now. They've submitted and met the requirements of the borough code. Um, so tonight they had three comments. They've addressed them. We're recommending uh, those to be conditions of the building permit because they're all very small items and they're actually something that will relate directly to the building permit. One being lights on the building. There'll be a shop drawing that shows what the lights look like. So when we're done, how many parking spaces do you have? On the plan? Mm -hmm. I think there was four. Four. It showed, I mean, this shows. I believe it was four. Yeah. How do you get four parking spaces? They have an engineer plan that shows that. They show four parking spaces. Okay, so my next step is to bring a group of people in here for the council meeting and, and revisit this irregularity in the process. If there was no notice provided, me an opportunity to check my opinion, then it's not reasonable for you to say, well, you should have filed an appeal on a, on a condition that I had no way of knowing that it was even taking place. And, I, and as Tom indicated, you would have to seek counsel on what your remedy is for that. Um, there, I don't believe there's anything this plan. So how big is the building? I was, I was going to ask, what is the addition? What is the size of the addition on the building? Sorry, I, I didn't look at the site plan that was posted. 26 by 24. Is the addition? Yes. The building is 26 by 24? The building addition. And you've got four parking spaces too? They have Are you three. kidding me? They have three parking spaces outside, one parking space inside. The ordinance requires them to have three parking spaces. It's all that it requires. So the building is 25%. They are, if you don't mind, they are showing four. So they are, as Kevin indicated, in compliance with the ordinance requirement. So let me get this straight. Right. What, what's the your original doll drawing that was submitted? That, sir. The original drawing that was submitted showed on the drawing a 12 by 22 plan. You know, that is going to turn into a 24 foot building. Let me just say this you apparently aren't listening to what's being said. The drawing that was submitted as a conditional <coughs> use was not a site plan drawing. It was submitted for the purpose of being permitted to proceed down the road of getting a site plan approved for the crematory. It was approved. There was nothing that obligated that if there were different facts, what you say is true, there was a concrete pad there. There's nothing that obligated them to keep that fact. So you're saying any misrepresentation on that application is permissible, as long as you guys approve it. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not a misrepresentation. Any such thing I don't think characterized it as that. I don't think that's And I'm not sure that it is misrepresentation. Him is saying it was a misrepresentation. Those are your words. Well, if I draw a 12 foot pad and I put a 24 foot building in there, I would think that's kind of a misrepresentation. I think, you're, I think you're misrepresenting what's being discussed, frankly. Okay. That's what I think. And let me just say this. Is for, they put, and again, that's a concept plan and, and of the generic use. They don't have to, when they go ahead to the site, they say, you know what, we can make a little bit bigger building on there. If they're allowed to do that under the zoning one, okay. they can do that at site plan stage. Many times, even so, when please, please. Would this building please, go to variance? Would, would there be a variance on this? this no, there's no variance involved in this. And the fact of the matter is, they could go build right now with the 12 by 24, and three years from now they decided, hey, we want to expand a little bit. They'd have every legal right then to go to that. That's not a misrepresentation. It's just an evolution of the plan and the development. Huh? Hey, Damon, that's one for you, too. Yeah. And I'm sure Shoes is going to be real happy that they didn't have to say in this either. But this is a, this is ridiculous. I've been here for 30 years. I mind my own business. I now have a pet crematorium across the street from my apartment building where my tenants are now talking about walking out. 
So, no, thanks, guys. I'm sure. What's that? So, I do have a question because on the April 25th letter, it did say that, it did say that on number three, adjacent property owners to the north and east have not been provided. That just means it's not shown on that drawing. Oh, that's all it means. Oh, okay. that's, a, that's a technicality. All right. So, that's okay. Autism. Seems to me uh, that the complaint is more on the on the uh, territory uh, situation than everything else, and, and I don't see absolutely nothing wrong with that. I decided to make this point, and it looks very uh, very good. I'm in favor of, of this to recommend council, whatever. Everybody else needs to okay. motion. Yes. Okay. Discussion. So, so, uh, so we've got a motion to pass this to approve it and pass it to council. With I don't see any contingency, Mr. Chairman. We did contingency before on the lighting and, the, and landscaping. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that that's being notified by the the people that it's being taken care of. Was oh, going to be taken care of. It. Okay. That's the only contingency that I recall we have. Am I right or wrong? Uh, right. Yeah. Thank you. So, motion to approve based on the contingencies indicated in the engineer's May 20th, May 20th letter. Okay, there's a motion. You made the motion. A second. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next on the agenda is Baldwin Street concept plan discussion. Before we get to that, I've got one other couple of couple things to cover. First, I'll provide a brief overview of the Baldwin Street concept to make sure that everyone's on the same page for the start of the discussion. <coughs> Second is to provide council members with the opportunity to give us some feedback based on um, the, the concept plan. And third is to provide time for visitors to, to ask questions and, and make comments. <coughs> Baldwin Street discussion started over three years ago to discuss mitigating the flooding of the area. The Planning Commission worked with a consultant who studied the complex situation and provided possible ideas to attempt to alleviate stormwater flooding issues, knowing full well that further input and planning would be required. This concept is a big picture approach to resolve the problem area. Part of this evolving process is to look at stormwater management watershed issues, infrastructure, and environmental issues. Any concept plan that is to be approved is going to be a phased, long-term, 20, 30 years process due to budgeting, due to budget and planning constraints. There are many details yet to be worked out. Any concept that is to be ultimately approved will require much more planning, public input, and involvement from, with both governmental and non-governmental entities. Again, this concept plan was meant as a big picture, long-term approach. The concept includes uh, phased acquisitions of properties of the Baldwin Street over time, providing green space for flood, storm water retention and runoff, realignment of McLaughlin Run and um, Bower Hill Road. If the borough currently had the money required to do the, carry out this project, which it does not. It would still be a three year, three years going in doing additional planning to carry this out. Um, but, uh, the planning commission recommended a concept plan to the uh, Bridgeville Borough Council last fall for review and comment. 
couple of procedural things. Um, this is a public forum. Please be respectful with your comments. We want everybody to be heard. If you have any side comments to be distracting, please take them out in the lobby so we can just carry on the, with the comments and, and the discussion. Mr. Chairman, may please, I make a, a, please, a comment? Please, oh, I'm sorry. Just a minute. Please direct all comments and questions to the Planning Commission up here. At this time, I would like to ask any of our Planning Commissioners if they have anything to add to these comments before we seek comments from the uh, Council members. The only uh, comment I have is reminding that we only approve not the entire concept. We approve one, two, and three, I believe. I believe we should note that um, okay. um, on these questions. Okay. The, the, the project is more than just one, phase one, phase two, and phase three. So explain what is phase one, two, and three. Oh, right. It's a... You got me there. I know. <laughs> I know. It's a, it's a baby. Well, it, I mean, we would have to go back. It, it had to do with the planning process. And planning the process. process. Okay. okay. So the plan is a lot more than that. Okay. But we just recommend those three things. Okay. They come to $33 million. Yeah. The entire project comes to $60 or $70 million. It's an F all. Yeah. So, I just not to confuse, yeah, the council knows this very well. They, they got that. They approved one, two, and three. Uh, anybody else from the commission have questions, comments? No. Okay. Um, Okay, Mr. Council President, do you, uh... uh yeah, um, so there are these phases that go along, and like I said, the, one, the first phase, there are titles for the phases, is acquire properties. And I think one of the issues that, you know, when we first stepped on with the firm was, um, you know, they talked about acquiring all the property on the creek side. Um, and you, when you look at the plan, there's a big dotted line around basically everything. And, you know, so when you talk about this $30 million price tag, it's obviously very expensive. Well, you're, you're acquiring twice as many properties as the original plan. So that's obviously going to inflate the cost. Um, you know, we're under, you know, we kind of thought that, hey, we, we all know that you're, you're flooding in Ball Street. And, um, you know, one way that you, one way to guarantee that you won't be flooded is if there's no prop, there's not a building to be flat. So, um, you know, looking at the way the plan was set up, I think, and uh, even talking to some people, some people have different uh, different opinions, but uh, with, uh, thinking that the properties that would be acquired were sh basically on the creek side and not on the other side. Um, you know, kind of wanted to see more of the. You know, we like the idea of a plan. You know, it's, obviously, it's a grandiose plan, but we wanted to maintain as much of, of the Baldwin Street character as possible. And this is takes this is no. There's nothing left of what there is there now. And I think a lot of people are concerned about that. I have a question since I'm the new guy here. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at this. Uh, Environmental planning and design document, this neighborhood plan and concept study and funding opportunity. And I'm just curious what alternatives were looked at that led up to this? Because as I understand this thing, it's basically saying take Byer Hill Road, move it to where Baltimore Street currently is, and create effectively a floodway, wetland, whatever you want to call it. Green space. Um, yeah, between where Baldwin Street is now and where Fire Hill is, and I guess including Fire Hill. Uh, and that's a huge change in traffic patterns. So obviously the character of Baldwin Street right, doesn't exist any longer. It's right. not Fire Hill Road. Uh, that's a pretty significant change in and of itself. But I'm just wondering there, what, what other alternatives were actually looked at. There was know? another plan that, that did show the existence of keeping Baldwin Street and Byron. Right. And when you say keeping Baldwin Street, would you take half of the houses? Still, and yeah, still have all the properties in between 
buyer hill and bottom. So you would just take that strip of properties up against the creek? Yes. Mostly the south part. Uh, and why was that discarded? I assume it was. I mean, was there a reason that that was not recommended? I think this plan, original plan, went through approval, and then this, the second plan of the four lanes showed up after. No, it was it was part of it was part of the discussion early on, and, and our hill couldn't be widened to to four lanes. Yeah, it, it wasn't four lanes; it was two lanes. It, the proposal would be two lanes. Two up, two one way streets. Mm-hmm. No, that wasn't okay. the proposal. It wasn't yeah. the one way streets. No, no, no. I don't remember that being. The no, it was. Why is it necessary to move Bar Hill Road? There's a couple of reasons. One was to line up Bar Hill Road here because you have the dog leg where in front of sill halls and that. Right. If you came down through the center, it wasn't to go, it was to go down through the center of the area between the creek and Baldwin Street. And basically, it was to come around from PJ's. Go through the parking lot next to Bruce's auto body, and then come down the center and line up. It was it was trying to, to stop the congestion. So it sounds like this thing morphed from a flood control study to a flood control study and a traffic plan. That's right. what it sounds like to me. It has gone through several morphs. Yeah, that that was in part of that concept. The other part is is the fact that the the viral road where it is now, the bed it's at. There's search, there are sections of it are, are leaning in towards the creek. And the wall, the wall on the creek is not a leaning. As you can see, um, the, from the top parts being washed out and that. And that was a concern was to try to eliminate that problem by eliminating Barco Road and bring the road down through the middle of the, the Baldwin Street area. That, it was, it, it, we were trying to get a lot of things cured by the whole project, and that's why it was a conceptual overall the, the, to work for the future and the flow of traffic in that. So. The idea to move Barrier Road to Lady, it, it, it didn't start with us, it didn't start with this planning commission. It, it goes way, way, way back. I, I recall. In, in, in the middle of the 50s, uh, late 50s, I used to come to council and they discussed that, that plan to move Barrio Dam to, to move the curve that where PJ is and straighten that up. Then I, I echo Bruce where he said to straighten up the other part. So there's an old, old idea, maybe. Uh, that one remember this. It's it's a been it's a been thousand after years to move by your road. At that time we don't even have a trouble with with water. Uh, now something else has happened with that. But that's that idea. It's been on the paper for many years. Excuse me. I like to comment on the stability. Just by your road. Just a minute, Bob. Right. Yeah. We've got public. Time for public comment. I thought that this was it. Yeah. So it, it just, it, frankly, it strikes me that I mean, we need to decide what problem we want to solve first because I've been hearing about this traffic problem since I moved to the borough in 77 and it's not going away. And it also strikes me that a lot of what's being talked about is well beyond the capacity of the borough to solve, frankly. We don't have the wherewithal to do all those major realignments and roadway reconstructions and whatever. We might have, unless we were to get some help from PennDOT or the county or SPC or somebody who does traffic for a living, traffic, traffic improvements for a living. Well, I mean, it's, you know, we've got our borough roads that we need to take care of, and that's probably where, in my mind, that's where we should keep our focus. And the other thing is, I mean, we have this flooding issue now, and I think that's something we can begin to address because when you get this Mission Creek thing, frankly, you end up where we are now, $30 million we can't afford, we don't know what to do next. Right. Well, and part of this, I mean, you know, 
it, it started out with the creek and, and right. widening that and, and basically looking at everything between Baldwin Street and Bower Hill. Um, and you know, realigning the, the, the creek and, and trying to do with the walls and stuff. And then as that process went on, it kind of morphed into you know, moving the roads. And, that. and I, I understand how that happens, but again, I'm getting 30 million bucks. Yes, yeah, yeah, well, and that's why we're having this discussion and, and you know, trying to get some feedback from, from the council and, and um, just trying to, you know, the, the, you guys, you know, we, we presented the, the, um, the, the plan to you guys to, and we're looking for some feedback and, you know, maybe this is too much, but, you know, give us some direction. It, it, let me ask you a question. Is there some thought to try to leverage SPC or someone like that to come in and give us money to do these roadway improvements? Is that what the thinking is? Yeah, well, then we had to start somewhere. And okay. this was part of that. And we, if we talked to the different entities to, for money, and that, they said, well, we need some kind of plan. Yeah, you can't was, show up so, and say, hey, we want to do this. So we want to get on their 12 year program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And not only that, Barrio Road is a borough road. It doesn't look right. like the county, it's, it's yeah, I understand so sadly that's our headache. Yeah. To go to this financial, uh, this committee, this government who has money and, and willing to give us some, we need plant as well as you know, and we need something. No, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand sure. where we are and where we're headed next, so. I mean, if the idea is to take this and approach SPC and say, Hey. We've got this critical need, there's no way we can afford it. You need to belly up the bar and fund this for us. I get that, mm -hmm. if that's what the plan is. It, it, was, it was a matter of having something in writing right. to be able to go to other entities and say, here's the issue, here's what we're trying to correct. Um, but it, you know, again, it needed, you know, there's a lot more planning, design, or uh, discussion that needed to happen. And a lot of this came out of Ivan. From that time period, right. and then then we had June twentieth, which enhanced the problem more and more. No, we had the one back in two thousand eleven. Oh yeah, no, it was July tenth and thirteenth. Yeah, that was the the next one that smacked us, and then the big one was uh, June twentieth. So they, these are all things that are guiding what we were looking for is to try to solve these problems. So. How and bad, it's not uh, cast in stone, it's something you need to at least get a start with. How bad is Bower Hill Road, structurally? Excuse me, I'd like to comment on that because I've done more research on it than yeah. anybody has. Bower Hill Road is not Bob, unstable. Bob, we're, we're having a discussion between... Well, uh, include the public. Excuse me, Chair, please. I, 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 made, I made, thought I made it clear that, you know, we're going to have a discussion with the council and then there would be time for visitors and the public to speak. Uh, Mrs. Simoroni, she, uh, you want to know how bad it is about you. Right, I mean, because we have spent money that, over that's the right. past decade, you, right? You said it, you said it. Every time we pave it and... Uh, we go underneath the, uh, the engineering the tests and everything. We, we're not successful. Uh, it hasn't been successful okay. in, in, a, in the last, at least in the last five years, six years. It's been bad. No matter what we do, it's been drained for a bore test for the water, etc. Et cetera, et cetera. All that is done. We still not successful. Did your question be answered? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, council members, you got any other additional questions? Direction? I, if I could. Um, Larry said something that strikes me and uh, kind of where my thought is. We have a lot to think about where this big plan is going, but you'd think we can do something about flooding now. And I agree with that. And I think that's where our efforts should be focused moving forward short term. So while I, I, I see the plan and I hear $30 million and 30 years later, I think I would like to see something more focused, you know, like, uh, pardon me? 
That's right. Yeah, you know, we're in short-term mitigation. That's that's my thought. And I don't know if there's anything we can do with short-term mitigation that still includes, you know, not not scrapping the plan, but moving towards the plan. But in the same at the same time, can you do those things in unison? Can you acquire? Can you do something on the creek side with those? You know, and so the, those properties aren't getting flooded at the same time. I don't know. That's and that's my my concern. Well, the first task here was property acquisition, and you know if you're going to do something there, the fact of the matter is that's a floodway, right? And you should just convert it back to what it is. With nature made it to the floodway. You acquire the properties, you take those buildings down on the Creekside Baldwin Road, and that's that fits with this plan. And we've already, um, I mean, we're in the process of work. We we did a, a, a survey with the property owners in the floodplain, and. Um, several of them have submitted requests for property acquisition from FEMA. So there are there are people that are willing to. They, we, we're not going after and let that you know obviously you know I've said before we're not going after people's properties and say hey we want you out of here. But we also don't want if if a, if a property goes away someone moves out we don't want people redeveloping on those pieces of property. Right. Um, so that's one of the things we want. we're working with. We're trying to work with FEMA, um, and if we can, if we're successful, there will be properties that will be go acquire, and that will be green space. Yeah, my suspicion is you can, yeah. by acquiring those properties and, and frankly changing it into green space now, you can solve some amount of the problem that actually exactly. happens on Baldwin Street now. Right. The other question is, what about the rest of the areas that flood up along the Glock and Rock? Exactly. How does any of that get? Get addressed in any of this, or are we just going to not address that? I don't know the answer to that question. Again, I haven't been here through all those discussions, and I know that there's fairly extensive flooding down here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of culverts, it's a lot of flow that comes down from St. Clair. There's no denying that. Well, part, of the, part of this was, was you know, we were tasked with trying to come up with some sort of long term plan, you know, um, and that's kind of where. You know this whole this whole thing started. I mean, obviously, after last year, there's there's some short-term stuff that needs to get done, and, and look at some mid-term solutions. Some you know, short-term being now to two or three years out, mid-term being three to fifteen or twenty, and then some sort of long-term solution. Yeah, I like the idea of using this to approach SPC, but again, you're just trying to get on your twelve-year. Plan. Sure. Your 12 year plan is really a 12 year plan. No. It's however long it takes them to get money and where you fit you know, in the priorities as compared to everything else that needs to be funded. But it's a start, and I think we should try to get there. And in the interim, you know, maybe take a look at these other things that we can do that would help mitigate some of this. And it's, you know, it can prove that we're earnest uh, to these funding agencies. I mean, they always like to see somebody to, to start things, so yeah. spend a little of their own money to, to see the project, if you will. But, and again, the other piece that I wonder about is on a, about this, what do we do? Because there's, there's a lot of houses and businesses mm -hmm. going up along there as well. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we're working on is the trash rack at the park to try to um, at least stop the debris from coming down and the biggest problem that we had on June 20th was the dumpsters and cars and everything else that floated into the creek and blocked the blocked the uh, the bridge up next to Sewell Halls. Now, a month later, we had a seven-inch rain event, and it never crested any of the the banks, and it was due to the fact of all the cleaning and, and removing of debris and that that was done. So we had a clear channel, and. We've approached up with St. Clair in regards to helping getting the creek maintained upstream, but that didn't very really, didn't go very far. They stand on the premise that the, the property owners are responsible and they don't have a they don't have a stake in it. Um, we Mike Mike and I attended a meeting with the Gateway and that and all three communities as far as Bethel Upper St. Clair and Bridgeville to try to come to some kind of um, uh, block and run watershed um, 
committee that, that could work together to, to solve you know all the problems because basically McLaughlin Creek is their sand or their stormwater conduit that that all their stormwater goes into that creek and it's their stormwater um, that's coming our direction Bethel and Upper St Clair so one and one of the things we're waiting for the plans to finalize for the trash track which is something to help the future to, to keep uh, the garbage coming down and stopping it right at the, the borough's line and you making a bypass out of the, uh, the end of the ball field. So that we are working on that part of it and we're waiting for some approvals in that at this time. So it's, I, I agree we have to work upstream all the way up to, to get it together. And like I said, we met, we, we were able to meet with the, the engineers now and I think Lori and them have sat down one other time since then, and um, we're looking forward to a couple more meetings with them to try to work out some kind of uh, uh, group uh, solution to this problem. Basically, a Mount or um, McLaughlin Run regional watershed. Yeah. Yeah, I think that really needs to happen. Uh, right. The trash rack has probably helped with the debris, but I've looked at the flood maps. I've looked at the the study. Uh, those culverts here in town don't have the capacity to pass a 100-year storm. So right. it's going to flood up above them no matter what on a 100-year storm. And I think a June 20th event, frankly, was something higher than a 100-year storm. Yeah, that's, yeah. And the other issue that we have going here that most engineers are conversant with, and you know, we call it climate change, but basically it just means it's raining a hell of a lot more, and it's a lot more intense, and we're just in one of those cycles. And that's going to continue for some amount of time. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that 100-year storm isn't really the 100-year storm. Maybe it's actually the 50-year storm because it happens so frequently. It's supposed to only happen every five years. years. It seems like it's happening every 10 years anymore. Yeah, every five, so it's, uh, So the point is, we're in that, but I think your idea of getting together, that's the only answer. I mean, there's no question that there's more, more development upstream currently than what was done when that flood study was right. uh, prepared. Of course, it was updated just a couple of years ago, wasn't it? I think the county updated that three or four, four years ago. We did the model. So all of those things are running at the same time. I think you need to get the cooperation of Bethel and St. Clair because there's only certain things you can do here to try to mitigate the damage within the borough. Okay. Something more has to be done to mitigate the amount of flow that comes down into the borough. I don't know how we get there though. Well, not, and Ori and these guys have been outreaching with them and continues to, and I think Bethel has been pretty receptive. But say, yeah, they, are, they changed their they changed their administrator because he would he he was there and he at that time they had used their fire department and some other public or private individuals to to clean their share up because up to the South Hills Village area, but then you had the splitting between. Back on our Bridgeville that needs to be addressed too, and uh, they through that process at least we sat down and started talking. And that was uh, the the best part of the whole deal. So, and I think maybe a next step too in that process conversationally, and and um, and we've done that in North Fayette Township and out with the surrounding townships out there, and I've forwarded a, an ordinance that. Is a, I think a really creative ordinance that allows for a, a, this exact watershed group to be created, and folks that are reticent about joining knows everything is by unanimity and and, and voluntary you know, each project, and it helps leverage grant money. And say two out of three want to be involved, then they they can sever off. Okay, those two will do it, then they can leverage that money. But you're right, all on the watershed up here. I think we need to press to get that. Active association. And frankly, we don't need Upper St. Clair's permission to knock on property interest doors and ask them if they'd be so kind as to allow us to go back and survey the properties. And like Mr. Colusi, before he passed, wanted to put a brigade of people up over chainsaws. We can do that sort of thing with them or without them. So there's another issue here that just thought that occurs to me, and I'm going to be something I'm loathe to do, and that's just to demonstrate my ignorance. Uh, I just <laughs> <laughs> Short Tears Creek Flood Authority. I know it exists, mm -hmm. and I know that it, it has responsibility for the actual channel itself. Does its 
purview extend beyond there to the extent no. that he could mm -hmm. make something we happen? That. We tried to try to do it for years. We've gone with uh, Oakdale when when that event happened in what 13. Yeah. We we got with the Army Corps of Engineers, with all the other communities, I think it was like 15 communities, to try to include yeah. McLaughlin Run, uh, Miller's Run, all these tributaries to Truckers Creek, had uh, Robinson Run, had them all included in the uh, Truckers Valley Flood Authority, and they said no. They who? Army Corps of Engineers. It was above them. They actually encouraged us to, because we couldn't do the D word or anything big in the region unless we got that critical mass. So they actually encouraged us to get together all those groups of municipalities, put the letter together, submitted it. And the former senator, I think a congressman, even tried to push it and said no. It would expand the jurisdiction. But, yeah. uh, so the Corps of Engineers has control over its. We're, we're trying to get we're trying to get Charter Valley Flood Authority to clean the back channel back here because that is part of their, their main channel. That's where the main creek used to flow. Right. And it's now the back, the back channel, as they call it, but it's also the main flow from a block and run creek into behind Universal Cyclops down through. But that's all downstream of the culverts, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So the right. problem's upstream of the culverts. Now, so. there, there, there is a huge problem back in there. They need, we're, with Collier and, and Bridgeville and that, to trying to get them to come in and clean some of that stuff up back in there. Yeah, it's, it, so it's, 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 no it's, feed, it's feeding everything back. That's why the skate ring and all that got nailed pretty good down there because that it's debris is there. In, in 13, as they were saying, um, what's his name? He, he, matter of fact, got the Army Corps engineers and they cleaned the mouth right where our McLaughlin goes into the back channel. But to alleviate, because there was so much debris and everything else on there, and they came in and, and did that for us at that time. But it needs to be continued on down so through that. Basically, if I understand what you're saying, it's backwater from that clogged channel that's created some amount of the flooding here. Yep. I have to look that flood. Hello. <laughs> Uh, uh, last fall, we did meet with Rich Fitzgerald. He came in, and there was some discussion about the bridge down by Still Hall. The county had a plan to do some repairs, superficial repairs to it. And we sort of asked him to put it on hold and see about building a new bridge, because that center pier down there, that's one of the major problems with it. So we haven't heard back from them of late. Whose bridge is that? Is that ours? Yeah. Yeah. It was a county bridge. The county bridge. We own the top of it. Yeah. Exactly. We own the roadway. We own the top of it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they they the top of it. They so they were trying to talk to yeah. them, and they yeah. still, instead of yeah. fixing yeah. something, it shouldn't be there. Yes. Leverage that money. Then so they'd get back to us on it, and they didn't. And also, those twin uh, culverts below the bridge, we've been discussing on. Uh, Getting rid of it, basically, or redesigning it, or somehow, and there's we're going to have to pay for all this. That's sort of the issue I have with the study that's going on. That we're discussing tonight. I mean, we're well, going to have to spend some money, and it's sort of where like I said that? earlier, it's on us. We can't get any help from the state, the feds, nobody. So we're basically, I want to say, screwed, but we're screwed. So. That's why I'm a little hesitant about diving into this program. I'm worried about the flood and the people. If those, the culverts go together, it's, I believe it's pen invest or something like that. The state has a cheap loan program. It's like 1.5% or something like that. So if the bridge got to be fixed, that would be a major thing. Plus those culverts, they get they fill up with their stuff. I know that money is in this, right? No, no, no. no. This, this, this is basically projects after the fact. Yeah, I mean we've been. Yeah, the other thing with the bridges. The, the other thing with the bridges is not just the culvert. It's the fact that the railroad bridge goes down like five feet down instead of up, and so that is also. There's three things that need to address there. Okay. Um, so, the council, 
You want us to work on short term? You want us to work on long term? What, what's your pleasure? We have, to blend it together. What's that? we have to blend it together. Let's try to do something short term. I think short term is the most important thing. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, you, know, and, you don't, don't think a long term solution plan is. Well, is? well I, mean, how, I mean, we're in a catch 22. Yeah. You know, if we don't look to long term. You know, is there a way, like I said, and I would like to see if there's something we could do that's parallel. I mean, I don't know, what do you think, Larry? I mean, is, I mean, is there a way that we could look at in between McLaughlin and Byrill, or not even Byrill and Baldwin, and do something with that strip there at the same time doing these other projects? Yeah, I think there are phases that can be done. What I'm a little bit concerned about is that this, this thing is, you know, looking at this through you know, like tunnel vision. There's all the pieces outside of this that we right. need to have a price tag and that's not been identified yet. I think we need to do that. But at the same time though, you know, I I don't know that it would necessarily be a bad thing for council to say, yeah, we like this plan. You could even adopt it. That doesn't really mean much. You're not committed to anything. Right. And submit it to the funding agencies and say, look, this is phase one of a major overhaul in this whole basin that we know needs to be done, but it's it's a good <coughs> step in the right direction. Maybe get them to fund it. I mean, I think they realize. Yeah, I mean, if we had, if we had thought that plan, we're not obligated to move forward with anything. But I think we need to know what the other pieces cost because <coughs> when you adopt this and you go to the funding agency and say, "Look, we're going to call this phase one. It's thirty million dollars." Oh, by the way, there's all these other pieces. And they cost this much that need to be addressed as well, but we think this is a good place to start. Yeah. And in the meantime, I mean, if you can move forward with acquiring those properties on Baldwin Street and go in there and take some of that time, <coughs> alleviate some of the problem. Sure. You know, it's a step in the right direction. But I think at the same time, we really need to turn up the heat on this idea of forming some kind of a drainage basin control authority or whatever you want to call it uh, that has some ability to influence what's going on up there and, and come up with some solutions but you, you, you're you're going to need buy-in from you're going to need sincere buy-in from st clair to make that Absolutely. Happen. Yeah. and you're going to need sincere buy-in from bethel park it can't just be bridgeville Absolutely. i don't know how you get that buy-in i mean are we even close is, is when I said sincere buy-in, I mean, is St. Clair? Not sincere. I mean, we, the last meeting, that I, I wasn't at the last meeting, but the one I went to, they, um, they got, we were working, we were, they were just, it was just a game right there. There hot spots for the, where. The, Who'd you meet with? Um, it was. Matt. Matt Sarakowski? Yeah, yeah, it was Matt, and he had a couple other people there. Um, for, for our meeting, which is me, Bruce, and Lori, and, uh, and our engineer. Um, and then Bethel Park had their engineer, a couple other people. Um, but it was a little bit like, we submitted, like, there was just a submit what projects they were working on, you know, in their communities, like our trash rack and stuff like that. Um, and I haven't seen, they were going to put together a map of, like, what everything All the retention areas. Yeah. And, like, what's, what's, what's been done over the last right. year. But I haven't seen it that far yet. Can we request? Can we go back to St. Clair and request the, well, an update? Yeah, we, we have an actual ad hoc committee that's been appointed to represent the borough's interest in this matter. I mean, it was a committee that will continue on. Me and Bruce went to the last one. I'll be more than happy to continue on if you like. I don't care. That's fine by me. If you guys, I'd like to serve. Be out like if yeah, you know, I'd like to reach us out. Yeah. I'd be more than happy. Yeah, it'd be great. I'd like to be a part of that too. Just yeah, excuse me. I think we need to reach out. Excuse me. I think we are getting the public a chance to talk. Excuse me. You guys want to have an executive decision between the commission and the public? This is a public. This is a public meeting. We're well, giving us a chance. To please speak. let the chair speak. Yeah. He already explained that there is a on the agenda. It's a, it's a time for public comment, really? which right. will occur. Really? Thank you. I'll get finished. Getting this wrapped up, and we'll give you a few minutes, Bob, and we'll give Pat a few minutes. Yeah, a few minutes, huh? Yeah, if we can maybe reschedule or schedule okay. another meeting, get a couple of dates out there. That's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, that would be great. That's what we were expecting. 
do we have a document anywhere that sort of itemizes the these things we've talked about tonight that identifies what the issues are and you know, even something that says one dollar sign versus five dollar sign so we have some kind of a feel for what we're up against no, no, so anything like that put together anywhere no, we're in the planning stages of that. that's what this is all okay. i'm going to let you have a conversation with them after are you saying <laughs> it, it, you know, that's the topic. Yeah. Um, we're running we're running late here and I just wanna there's other comments here. You have no, I was gonna get at it would actually be good for us to have a session where we kind of strategize and plan for our own outreach to the other community. Does anybody else have a question? I do have a question. So where does the trash raft in the Glockland Park and then the area behind Dairy Delight sit? I mean, are those projects that are in development or work? We're actually done? meeting with, uh, on the 31st, we're a meeting with Kevin and Dover and with Derek. Okay, all right, then how about the trash okay. ramp? Where does that We're waiting for the, the permits have been submitted um, and we're waiting for the permits to be approved. Okay. It's all right. a separate, the permits take several months. Okay, all right, good. Hopefully not several months, but. Okay. Okay. Bob, I'll give you five minutes. I want more than five minutes. You've got five minutes. Yeah, well, and then have the police officer come in and arrest me. You had this, this sure car, excuse me, right. this, this discussion, too much of it is based on flawed assumptions. Matter of fact, the Department of Environmental Protection in 90, 1980 did a study on what Glockham on the road uh, flooding problem and solution. I did a study four, three years ago on it. The University of Pittsburgh students did a study on it nine months ago, and all three of those studies were the same, and they differ entirely from the whatever that whatever that colored drawing was that you held up, Larry. The, 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 that's point number one. Point number two is planning commission has been misled about the instability of Barbara Road. I'm not blaming you guys. I don't know who gave you the information. But if you drive down Bower Hill Road and look at the, rock, the, the stone structure that's exposed on the, if you're heading west on the right, it's not soft. It's all rock. Just number, number one, number two. Number three, the core borings that Gateway Engineering did indicates that the area under Bower Hill Road is not unstable, unstable. And last month, I made it very clear to you with photographic evidence that the four or five homes above the area of Bowerher Road that keeps having a paving problem, 20 of their downspots plus 70,000 square feet of the land has been pouring the water down under the road. The concept, Bowerher Road does not have to be rebuilt. And the serpentine design that is on the, uh, the accepted plan does not have to be uh, done. And incidentally, Larry, you and Mike are absolutely correct. If you think you're going to get, uh, the, the, the problem is you have seven square miles of surface in Upper St. Clair and uh, Bethel Park that funnel into three quarter of a mile of the Bridgeville. But all three of the studies that I just mentioned to you all said the same thing. You've got to deepen, widen the creek bed through Bridgeville, and some of you were correct about the restrictions. The, bar, the, uh, the, the measurements that I took of the bridges, its restrictions, the measurements that the uh, University of Pittsburgh students took are, are identical. The problem is the culvert. The culvert, as you can understand, Larry, only has a uh, per second of cubic foot flow of 1,400 or something like that. Or, 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 and, and the damn flow of the creek's like 5,000. You guys are on. And the, the Bower here Road, uh, the bridge, by the way, is not the, the main problem. The, the, everybody thinks that the Bower Road Road's the main problem because that's where the debris. Uh, stopped and uh, because of that center divider. Everybody assumes that's the problem is the culvert's got to be replaced. You're right, Jack and Mike. You, that's something that you've got to work on uh, right away. And in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, Upper St. Clair being cooperative and Bethel Barkley, 
we have no influence over them unless you sue them. And even if you sue them, that's not going to do any good. It was the Upper St. Clair Design Company that decided to make Bridgeville the retention, a five-acre retention pond, and wipe out the uh, bar girl, or I'm sorry, the Baldwin Street Business District. Because they don't want the retention pond up in uh, 800 yards north of uh, Ridgeville and they can lie. But anyway, I just want to make one comment. The solution, in my opinion, and three other engineers that I've talked to and city planners, is right here. If, and this pertains to the flooding problem. Until Bridgeville, uh, Upper St. Clair and Collier, and Brett's the engineer for Collier as well, until you guys get together and put together a comprehensive plan like this to solve the regional traffic congestion problem, you aren't going anywhere. Parts of the solution to the Baldwin Street flooding, which is right here, and you were talking about the two one-way couple or something, part of it is getting a ramp built from the, from the Baldwin Street Bridge, eight feet down to a uh, Bar to Baldwin Street, I'm sorry, the Bar to Road Bridge. If you're not, and you're going to end up with two one way streets. That would give you a four lane road from this intersection where Cook School, McLaughlin Run, and Bar to Road meet over to the two one way couple by extending Shady Avenue by 220 yards. If you, as a community and as a community leaders, and you have the competence to do this and the concern for the public to do it, but the three communities have got together and do something regionally. Okay. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you solve regional problems, you'll get money. Okay. Do you have anything new to add? I just told okay. you. All right. Uh, everything I just told okay. you is just new. Thank you. Pat? Thank you. Larry, this proposal, this plan, was not a flood control plan that morphed a mission creep into a traffic plan. Mr. Chairman, in your opening comments, you talked about flood. If you'll hark back to the beginning of the, uh, the request to environmental planning and design. Which is before the time. Okay, thank you. Now, that explains why. The initial request to EPD was not to create a flood control plan. The initial request was to try and solve four problems. Traffic, flooding, sewage, and parking. In an area of our community that needed assistance. The Bower Hill Road, Baldwin Street Corridor. Flooding was one piece of that. With the June 20th, 2018 flood, the project was hijacked. And the focus is on flooding. What you see before you was not a plan to solve flooding. It doesn't address the houses on McLaughlin. It is not a flood control plan in isolation. It was to look at Baldwin Street and Bower Hill and try and improve that area. Am I on? I, I don't remember the parking plan issue. I thought, it, I thought it was to try to do a economic redevelopment project for an area that has had habitual flooding and try to do some, some relief for it. How can we kill two birds with one stone? How can we re rejuvenate an area and solve the flooding problem at the same time? Mm -hmm. Uh, economic redevelopment pro program in an area that has, has some problems. Right. And yes, I, I mean, as far as sewage like being a problem, I don't remember that. I mean, uh, we always had a sewage problem. It's the article of right. sewage, but that was, Regardless. and we, we quickly threw that and said, whatever we do, whatever is done, I must have missed that. the sewage will get solved. <laughs> you know, so, you're correct, by the way. The idea was to take plan that Bridgeville agreed upon, and then go to SPC, Allegheny County Economic Development, and try and get funding for a larger plan. <laughs> Imagine if you snapped your fingers and there was no more flooding, 
Baldwin Street would not miraculously become, have economic development. It faces a series of problems. If you look from Painters Run Road to Washington Avenue, you see the difficulties. Again, snap your fingers, no flooding. You still don't have development that's going to come into the Baldwin Street corridor because it doesn't it doesn't have the access. It doesn't have all of the other amenities that you need to have good economic development. So I'm going to ask you, hold on one second, I'm just going to ask you a basic question. Economic development in Baldwin Street, it's a flood zone. Does that make any sense? Uh, exactly, why the, exactly why the first step of it was acquire properties. And do what? Acquire property so that you have green space. Now the question is So the acquire properties take them down and you rid the economic exactly. development get rid of the green well, space. Well, this. Now, this is where the big debate is. Do you retain the hillside properties? Are you able to solve enough of the flooding problem? And this I is think that's what I see here, and it's you know, I understand that. Like I said, you can solve I don't know if you're going to solve all the flooding issues uh, with those buildings on Baldwin Street, but you'll solve a significant piece by taking them. Well, by them. taking the creek side. That was the clear, you know, was take the creek side. So that's perceived as being part of the economic development intent. Yes. Well, okay. One of the ideas was you've got green space, but perhaps we could put a little bit more parking in the green space so that the buildings in the hillside on the hillside of what was Baldwin Street, could have some place for their customers to park. Now, EPD's solution was to take the hillside properties as well, then raise them, then raise them on stilts and put parking underneath the buildings. That part of the plan, I don't know, has much traction. I certainly don't don't buy into that part of the plan. I don't know about But that yeah, part of the plan was so far down the road right. anyway that it, you know, that yeah. was... Exactly. Best as... as, Wait, as, as we got to that part of the plan, we we're like... Right. Yeah, that, we're, that's, we've all, we're in $20 million. Yeah. Well, we're yeah, so far into it. $20 million in 30 and years. People are, going, people are buying property and you're building whatever they want anyway. Right. So, <laughs> so I, I strongly agree with what Larry Levin said. You know, this is a concept. If you approve it, and if you approve it, you can send it to funding sources and try and get some buy-in. It at least says that the borough wants to do something about Baldwin Street Power Hill. So thank you. Thank you, Pat. Anybody else? You have to say something, please. Please I, stand up and identify yourself. Jay Stack. I live on uh, Maple Street. Uh, get flooded. I call it river life, which you know you get flooded, clean up. But they put a wall. I don't know if you or uh, any of you have heard. It. They replaced the wall on Maple Street, and they left the middle of it untouched. And we wanted the residents want that live there, and there's only a few houses. Would like it the blocks that are four high, okay, instead of three. What they did, and then in front of my property, they did absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing. Okay, so there's a four-inch curve in front of my property for about 35 feet, and then about 75 feet, they put a new wall up, which serves no purpose whatsoever. It's not protecting nobody from flooding. And my personal opinion, I chose to live there. Okay. And I'll live her till the day I die. And that's so with my family. But when they do a project, like an infrastructure project for flooding, that was half assed done, okay? Excuse my French. And if you're going to start on a, a, a project, get one part done, okay? That helps us out, okay? People on Baldwin Street, they're going to get flooded. I get flooded just as often as Baldwin Street, okay? I get it up through the sewers. It comes over the wall. I got, we have video of it coming down the street before the creek even came over, okay? We literally have it on film and that. But 
I want to get it. Mike said that he's going to talk to the engineers and that because to, uh, to us people that live there, that's a waste of money. Okay. Now, if you look at the bridge, now over across the creek, now for, in order for them to get flooded over there, the water has to come as high as the bridge and it splits it. You understand? Yep. So Are you it's talking getting, about the new bridge? Yes. I live down there. Right. Okay, it's yeah. four, about four feet lower, three foot lower than McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see something done because, for one thing, there were no drawings for this project. Okay? I know that for a fact. The company that did it, they, they did what they was told to do. The response I got from Gateway Engineer and a borough employee was, if the wheel's not broke, don't fix it, okay? And if you go down Maple Street, which I'd encourage you to, so you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you'd say, well, I don't know what wheel they're talking about because that wheel sure as hell is broken. And with that, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Jay. Somebody else? Okay. Kevin? Yeah, um, all good information. One question I had just listening. After the floods last year, is there a map, a document that shows all these items that we're talking about, starting at the channel being cleaned out and the structures coming up so that um, something I'd recommend, big picture, is this project here is in the middle. Right. You have water coming down from up above. You have significant restrictions down below. Um, so when we when we meet next week, um, if that's not been created, oh, we couldn't oh. spend an hour, start at the bottom and work our way up. I'd like to have that all on one document. Sure. And then um, just take a look at it from, okay, uh, there's a bunch of grant information included in this document. Mm -hmm. Some of them are applicable for things downstream. Some of them would help for regional support. Okay. Some of them you can apply locally and figure out how to leverage your money the most we can, starting downstream, because if we fix this problem in the middle, although it may look really nice, it may not last through sure. the next storm because it can't get away from the area. Right. Um, so at some point, and Gateway may have did this, they may have looked to see how big should everything be. If they did, if we could get our hands on that and look at it, if we can, then you know, we'll provide some guidance on what we think the next steps are there. Um, because it's just big picture planning, but if a culvert is 10 by 10 or 20 by 20, and it needs to be 30 by 40, um, that has a price tag to it. It's not in any of these. But there's potentially money out there that could be multi-municipal, could be PennDOT, could be SBC. It's only like, go like NS4, like... Everybody has to have certain qualification uh, requirements for that. Yes. I mean, doesn't some of this stuff, if we do for stormwater, doesn't and that count for, as your requirements? And there is uh, invest money for right. infrastructure improvements. And when you have flooding such as this, although at first it's very difficult, every year there's more money that comes out for things that previously never got funded. Okay. Um, there was all these slides last year. Well, this year people get funding for slides. They never got funding before. Okay. Um, so I think if you don't have that document uh, oh, for this committee, it would be good to list out, okay, here's all the problems, and here's the stream, here's the size of it roughly, and um, it'll be a good starting point, and then start putting dollars into those things. If something's $10 million and it's impacted by four different municipalities, then let's figure out how and, and who we have to talk to. Absolutely. Now, the Army Corps thing downstream, that takes multi-municipal. Right. Um, but I think keep going to that um, well that it needs cleaned, and eventually it'll be cleaned. Uh, they did clean out the other channel. I went to multiple meetings over 10 years. They said they were never going to clean that out again. And when enough pressure got put on, next thing you know, there was three contracts come out, and they cleaned out the main channel. Sure. So the back channel does need clean. Yeah. It's holding water back. Well, that probably is impacting that backwater into um, the, the stream. So. Um, I think it'd be good to have that document for your committee, and um, next week, if we could, we could spend some time and do that. Sounds good. The information you're requesting already exists in terms of the openings of all five bridges. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So just to kind of wrap things up, we'll start looking at 
The Planning Commission will start looking at short-term, mid-term type stuff. We'll leave this document as is for you guys to fester over for a while, or you're going to adopt it, or? We have to wait till the meeting. We can't do that now. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm looking for, just I mean, trying to it, recap. I, I, I can't, you know, there's nothing wrong with adopting it, I don't think. I mean, in one discussion at the, at the meeting, at our meeting, like I said, we can adopt it, and it's, it shows that we have a plan to go out there like SPC money and stuff like that. Plan. Yeah, to right. Kevin's it's point, though. Bob, if you realize it doesn't have to, whether it's something you draw for that, it's a drawing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, con, it's a concept for, for which to uh, approach funding. So, okay. Um, any other? Yeah, I do want to make one suggestion. Um, I mean, this is a good discussion point, and I think you guys had these kinds of meetings in the last couple of years. If we could maybe start thinking about scheduling something quarterly or semi-annually just for this very purpose, Perfect. just to keep this thing moving, because the problem is, it's all good discussion here tonight. We don't follow up on it, it's just good discussion. Yeah. So, so just to clarify, you're, you're having um, a public meeting with those guys joining us for us. A joint meeting, yeah. A public right. meeting with the Planning Commission and Council to be at our meetings. Okay. But I don't think our agenda is all that. No. Because he said we can't do it here. Sure. Well, maybe yeah. just routinely <laughs> do it on some frequency. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 or, I, or, yeah. or otherwise. Yeah. yeah. That would be the same thing. Um, one, one last thing. Since the anniversary is next month, is there any intent or any ideas to providing information to the public so that we can actually go and say, this is what we're doing, this is what we're planning for the time day? I mean, it doesn't have to be that we're going to have Baldwin Street fixed in 30 years or $30 million. But just an idea that, that you know, we've applied for grants for the area behind Dairy Delight, or the trash rack is going in and the ballpark is being lowered, that sort of thing. I mean, because I hear it all the time, you know, what's going on? And it's on social media <coughs> too, so. You know, it's about, you know, the borough has some sort of communication plan, I presume, for doing this kind of thing. Um, that's something, yeah, that's, I mean, we, we know that we, I mean, we need to communicate better, um, and that's something that we are working to this point. I mean, especially with the one year coming okay. up. Yep. It's simple, just a nice recap of what was right. tonight. Right. It makes a very good press release, mm -hmm. so that we can feel at ease that something's being done. Yeah. Okay. Any other? There, there is no, no doubt about it, Mr. Chairman, that the 10 year, 12 year plan would be the right one to do and concentrate on it that we heard from all of us plus the, the, the council and that we concentrate on on a flood priority and you'd be surprised you concentrate on a flood all those other mechanisms they come by themselves from what has to be done let's face it the, it just come by so I think that's what we should do and we don't need in my opinion we don't need to spend another $40,000 with an advisor. We have an, enough calibers here. We have a, a, a solicitor, we have an engineer, and they're nice. We can get together and, and shorten this uh, plan to, to, and to and 12 years and put them to work. And, and as I said, our priority got to be flood. And then again, I don't want to repeat myself. With that, everything else comes with it. Thank you. Okay. Um, and for the discussion, I'd entertain a motion. I have one quick, quick observation. If it's possible, can our agenda be amended so that the visitors and public comment section is moved to right before adoption of minutes? So when you have citizens here who wanted to talk about an application of before us, we could hear them before we actually come to that agenda item versus having always public interject into our meeting and it just goes to a free-for-all. 
I think if it was structures that this they had the opportunity to talk before consideration was done, it would move along faster. So it's just I would recommend moving that if we if other people would agree. <coughs> it was their way somehow. I don't know. The time so you got to limit the time to do that mm -hmm. because the problem is that that can get out of control and you can be here all night. I mean, yeah. if you can do it that way, then you just limit the time. Yeah. Okay. Take that under advisement. Okay. Anything else? Take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.